Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is uh, a interesting video. You may notice, oh, he's got another server. Yeah, you're right, it is a server. It is a Dell PowerVault TL2000. So it's not a compute server, it's a storage server. So basically this is a server that uh, stores tape medium. Anyway, so those uh, tape medium is in SAS tapes. So there's a overall walk around. I'm not going to show you how the arm works. I have a separate video on how that works. Uh, on it, recorded my S5. I have to get that off later. Um, with my, I give my S5 to my mom. So yeah. Anyways, it was designed to be pretty modular, and this one's worth a few thousand dollars because it's got the L5. Uh, as you can see, it has the L5 SAS interface reader head and I'll give you a boot up video and there'll also be a few clips and maybe a separate video on diag because I had on my on the, I recorded on the S5 I was diagnosing the system uh, I was diagnosing it because it wasn't working and it turned out it's just because it was on uneven ground just seems to be very fragile. Anyways, taking out the reed head. The system is the most expensive part, excluding the the picker. This is an IBM L5 LTO Ultrium reed head. I've seen these things on eBay for about a couple grand. Uh, so, yeah, this is not this machine. I don't have this thing long because it's not actually mine. I got the wrong server. When I went to buy, well, I went to buy a server. It was had which have two CPU cores and uh, two two quad core CPUs and a bunch of RAM. And I got this instead by accident. And yeah, so I'm just waiting for a reply when I can pick it up next. So I'm just gonna put that back in. Has a modular power supply, no redundancy. But then again, these things, these tape servers are predominantly used for backups because each tape, as you'll see later, is 1600 gig uh, compressed. And uh, yeah, it's very fast. It's SAS, it's got two direct wire cop it, copper cables which go into a SAS card on the back of a real working server. So yeah, this power supply is a pretty chunky one. It has an op it, I believe it has an Opteron CPU, uh, which I'll show you in a sec. To put this power supply and show you the power supply. Uh. Oh. Good old flathead screwdriver. There we go. So it's a very chunky. Bigger than an, it's bigger than an ATX power supply. It's a 76 watt power supply. I think it's 99% efficiency. Max output with 90 watts. It's got a fan. Yeah, it does not say it's efficiency, but it's a pretty good one because it's only outputting a few hundred, less than 100 watts. So, yeah. It's got a 5 volt rail and a 12 volt rail, and the parts are also exposed in the connector. You can see a bunch of resistors and ICs in there. So we'll put that back in. A very chunky power supply for 100 watts. I've seen a power adapter a quarter, a tenth of the size that does 100 watts. So put that in. Screw that back on. Well, nice. And so this is the a gig a uh, ten gig, I believe it's a ten gig Ethernet adapter with an extra Sask plug or something like that. Um. And so yeah. Oh. 
like this. There we go. So here is a looks like a processor because it has memory. And if you, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's an AMD heat spreader in there. Uh, it's a surface mount, and I'm guessing that's either some custom BGA or it's a, a, a I'm most likely sure it's a custom BGA built by AMD most likely an Opteron a low power Opteron because it's got a cool master fan on it as well and there's a, some like a, a, most likely a SAS controller here maybe Ethernet control not exactly sure so I don't even know what these rivets are for they're riveted to the main board for some reason. I'll take that one out and then underneath underneath it is just a small I know it's a small PCI, I'm guessing it could be a controller module, I'm not exactly sure, it has an Atmel um, 1819RM200, so it's probably, I think that's a quad core ARM chip, and it's got a backup cap as well, so those caps can help run this board for at least 12 seconds or something before it crashes. It's got another Ethernet, a USB, and a telephone connection. And these two aren't interchangeable. So I, I'm guessing this is a SAS card with some fancy network, networking BIOS and stuff. So it's got, it's got to have a CPU, and this is just a control module. Because this one has a full, like, it's 1x PCI not PCIe connection and then this one just has like bare copper like 16 pin bare copper connector so yeah screw this bottom one back in and then we put the big chunky one in as well by the way, if I get any comments saying you do realize you're playing with really expensive stuff, yes, I know I am playing with expensive stuff, very expensive stuff, to as a matter of fact. But I bought this thing for thirty bucks. I bought a different machine for thirty bucks, and I got this instead. Um, I was meant to, we were meant to swap today, but I never got a response back. So yeah. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna get power to this machine, and I'll show you how it works and how I can, and. Oh yeah, I'm going to take this out, this is a shipping pin I put in. It comes with it, it's just the pin that holds the picker, which you'll see maybe in a different different video. Um, from moving around when you're picking it up. Someone put it on a table. I'll be right back once we get a power cable. Okay, so I've got a power cable going into it from the wall plug over there. And you notice that this screen has like a pixel dent in it, that's the way I got it. And this case is actually pretty buffed up, but everything works. So you'll see that now. I'm gonna turn it on, it starts off loud, but then it quiet quietens down. You see the display turned on. It's a lot darker than it, than it you can see on the screen. It's actually the screen my phone enhances it for some reason. Um but it should be able to there we go. So it means it's working. Uh, it's showing the startup information. I'll take this out of the tripod. Show you guys. So yeah, it's busy right now. It's initializing. It's gonna go. You'll be able to. You hear the read head going going through, and it'll be pick the picker will be going and going doing stuff. So what I can do is I can go control. And I can go up, open cartridges. No, oh, there's move cartridge. It does move. So I can open the left magazine. So currently it's busy, and it, the auto picker will be picking 
and scanning the cards. You'll, uh, once it starts, I'll let you hear. You can hear it initializing. So you will be able to see that happening in real time once I release that video after this one. Uh, you can, oh, you, you, if you pay close attention, down there you might see the picker going across. There you go, you can see it there. It's currently right there. And it's moving around. So it's currently going to go to here. It's going to scan each cartridge. I'll show you what I mean by cartridges. Once this thing finishes initializing. So you can hear it scanning right now. Okay, so it finished. I heard it go all the way across. Scan this bank and then scan that bank. And then now on the screen it's starting to idle. So what I can do is I can let it release the left cartridge. You'll hear the picker move towards the release mechanism and I should be able to pull it out. Like so. so pull out the cartridge. Magazine bait. And here they are. So here's a whole bunch of cartridges. I shouldn't be doing that, but anyway, it's good enough. Yeah, I can feel the airflow going through there. I think there's like up to two fans. So these are the SAS cartridges. They, these are full of tape. It, uh, they are fast when you copy files, and uh, but reading files are pretty slow. There's some kid across the road yelling for some reason. And there's these. This is the Dell factory ones. But you can get heaps of HP and IBM ones. This one's a 800 gigabyte native and a 1600 gig compressed. And it's an Ultra LTO4, even though there's an LTO5 read head in there, but this still works fine. And in the right cartridge I'll get to, it's, uh, it wants me to insert this left cartridge, but each time I can get it to do that, but this is a clean, a clean cartridge, there's only one of these. And basically, uh, once every three times or something, it gets booted up, it will take, the picker will take this, take it out. Put it into the read head and the read head will clean itself. Take it out, put it back into the magazine. And what the read the picker was doing when it was initializing is it had a laser. And on the picker the the laser was scanning all these barcodes so it knows sorry about the focus and it knows what it's doing. So it can identify this as clean. Then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. There's nine cartridges in this particular magazine. In the other magazine, let's put this magazine back in. Because it's complaining. There you go. I'm gonna put the iron in. It's gonna in. So I believe it's gonna scan them. Yes, yeah, so you can hear it scanning them. Yeah, it's scanning them currently. And you can hear every time you hear like a high pitched whine, that's every time the laser fires. And every time you hear that dirt, dirt, that's the picker level bit going up and down, like that sound just there. So it's going to inventory the library. It's going to move the tripod over a little bit so you, I can get this cartridge out. And once the screen says idle, you guys can't see it, but it's here. Idle, it's idle ran. It says idle ran. I'm gonna press down, then the release of the right cartridge. And inside the case, in the other video you'll see, you'll see that there's just two tabs in there, which it goes through. So now, I'm taking out this cartridge. And this one has an identical library. So it looks like one more shorter because it does not have the clean cartridge in the service port. And did I mention that as you can see down there, there is a second bay here. You can take out the clean cartridge. I'll show you that in a sec. So and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, there's one missing. I might take this one for later, just because I got something to do with it. And the only way you can access these is for doing is by connecting the, your SAS cable to the back back of the machine, or you can get a reader, which is really expensive. You can see this is the gear that the thing connects to, the read head connects to. What I'll do 
I'm looking at it here. So I can open I.O. station. So this will open this second drive bay here. Well, I believe it's just the, the clean cargo, so I'll let it scan all that. And you can see there's a light here. That means clean, needed. Clean is needed. So I'm gonna go open IO station. The read the pick is gonna go do something, come down here, hit a tab, and as you see it popped out. I gotta pull it out. And that's how you switch your clean cartridges. That's how you switch your cleaning cartridges because they um they get have they get switched every few months if you this thing this thing's running twenty four seven. They shouldn't be running twenty four seven but they are. So yeah. You can also um get it to reinventory, open magazines, and we can get it to move cartridge. So this will move the clean cartridge to the IO one, which is the read head, I'll show you that on the end of the video. But anyways you, you can show you that so it will move clean so C L N U zero zero L one to uh, IO one. So that's the read head I pulled out the back at the beginning of the video. So I'll I'll, I'll put this back in the tripod so you guys can hear it. And yeah. So press enter. Press enter a few times. Huh? Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Right. So we'll hear the picker go down. It'll line up with the clean. You hear the thing coming up. So you can pull out the you can pull out the here, pulling it out, and then the read head will go back here. Put it into the reader, and you can hear this, the reader running now. The read head. I'm very quiet. That's a detecting it. It's gonna go. Back to the picker, picker's gonna take you across here. You hear it going into the picker, picker's gonna rotate. It's gonna go across here, there's a bug on there. It's gonna put it back into the IO station bay. So that's a very interesting depiction of how these these machines use this. In the second video, you'll see me troubleshooting and trying to figure out why this wasn't working with the hood off. And there's a lot of screws. I would, if there was like four screws or something, I would take it off and show you guys like right here. But I sort of am busy and I just felt like making this video. Anyways, guys, don't, don't forget to subscribe. Peace. Tell me if you like this video. Tell me if you want to buy this as well. I'll, buy, I'll give it to you for a solid few hundred dollars. Um, they're worth a couple grand at least. It's a power vault TL two hundred as you can see there. I might just no I can't zoom in that far. Well I can but I can't in the camera there. Anyways guys, don't forget to subscribe. Peace.